Good day, fellow investors. As we continue with our key investment topics, a key investment topic that is often discussed in the comments section is investing in index funds. So if we look on the comments on various videos, Buffett says, if those long decades of market stagnant returns that make me not so interested in ETFs, whereas buying businesses directly, I can vet if they have a growth trajectory at a decent valuation. And that's exactly what we do here on this channel, Value Investing. We are looking for businesses that transcend markets and economies. However, if we compare performance of businesses, Alibaba is down about 17.5% since the first Buy Alibaba video compared to the S&P 500 being up 17%. Sometimes index investing might be the easiest, as Gunwich here says. I really wanted to touch on this because it's a very important subject and it's a decision you have to make as a long-term investor and you have to see whether index funds or individual stock investing is better to reach your financial goals. Index funds is really easier, simpler, so less much effort, but you need to have the right strategy. Investing in individual businesses requires a lot of effort, but of course, if you put a lot of effort into it, then the rewards should be much higher. And I'll put here my personal bias. If I would have invested in index funds 20 years ago, I would still be a very, very poor kid from a former communist country. However, I decided let's buy businesses and that worked really well for me. Therefore, I'm biased, but I've been doing it for over 20 years and it still goes really, really well. So I started the S&P 500 was at 1000, now it's at 4000, that's a 4x. I made 20, 30x on my investments and therefore, as I said, I'm biased, but I still think I can discuss a good strategy on index funds and then also on direct investments. And I want to first discuss what to expect when it comes to index funds. It's important to invest, it's important to invest in businesses because stocks usually go up. And stocks give you two things, some kind of protection against inflation because this is the nominal stock price index, what is shown everything with an average return of 10% over the last 90 years. But this is the same index adjusted for inflation. So this is up 2.5 times, this is up 2,500 or even more now. So the difference here is inflation. So it's better to be invested in good businesses. You get some protection for inflation and you get a dividend and everything over time should grow. If you own something like the S&P 500, no worries there. But what are the expected returns from an index fund like the S&P 500. If you are an individual investor, then you have a table like this. This is the public one. You can download it in the link in the description below. The premium one is on my research platform. And if you have a table like this, you compare investments, you compare investment opportunities. And I did the same for the S&P 500. I have taken dividends as a valuation metric. Here you have a terminal multiple of 50, which implies a dividend yield of 2% that the market will expect something like that in 2030. I have calculated the present value of the dividend payments, 5% dividend growth, 5% dividend discount rate, and the intrinsic value for a 5% return from the S&P 500 is 3,284. As the S&P 500 is a thousand points higher, that means that your expected returns from investing in index funds will be lower. If I change the rate here to free, then we are at 3,902.5. So we are at 4,106. So the expected return from a current investment in the S&P 500 is 2.5%. And that's just above the dividend yield. And that's the case because the valuations are really stretched. But on top of that, you also have to have inflation. If the inflation rate is 2, 3, 4, 5%, that should 
impact the growth of the businesses, increase the growth and likely the long-term profits. So that should add those percentage points of returns. And let's say that in a long-term scenario, from the current level, you will get 5 to 6%. So the positives there are 5 to 6%, much better than bonds or bank or anything. Further positive, extremely important positive is you don't have to ever more think about it. So you put it on automatic, you invest on a monthly basis and in 10, 20 years, you'll have a nice portfolio. But the key is that you do it automatically. And the key is that you put more money in, in the very, very bad times, because a lot of people simply stop buying here and buying here is what creates the additional value, the additional return. So you have to set it and forget it and buy it, especially when things are thin. True thick and thin, and especially when things are thin. So nothing wrong with an index fund strategy. See how it fits you. A lot of people did really well over time. And I say five to 6% long-term returns should be expected and the benefits is you don't have to think about it. You just have to stick to the strategy. However, I really don't like index funds because of many reasons. Just a quick summary here. This is a nice comment that I wanted to share. Satsai says that 500 plus institutions are invested in NEO. That means that they are blind too. Yes, institutions are blind for sure. Institutions don't manage their own money, they manage your money, so they have no skin in the game, so they don't care about, they care only about the fees, and if you have hot stocks, more people will be happy, oh, you invested in that hot stock that's smart. When things go bad, they just sell it for lower, as we have seen with ARK and their China investments, so check that video too. If you are more interested, all the videos that I mentioned will be in the link in the description below. So institutions buy because of market capitalization. Index funds are market capitalization weighted. So they buy the most expensive things because everyone else owns it. I really like doing the opposite. Then Alessandro really mentions here a positive aspect of accumulating ETFs. And something very important here is that Warren Buffett said that if you make decisions on taxes, that's detrimental to your long-term returns. I couldn't find the quote, but that's something that he says that he never calculates taxes when making an investment decision. If the investment decision is good, then the tax impact, okay, you will pay capital gain tax or dividend tax or whatever, but the tax impact is minimal. And investing in ETFs because of the small tax advantage that you might have there for me is again a no-go. A negative of investing in businesses is that you really need to spend a lot of time on it. It's my full-time job. All I do is analyze and learn about businesses and then in the evening or early morning like I'm doing now it's six o'clock in the morning, I film some videos that I prepared late at night. But usually the day is all about research. So Yes, investing in stocks for individuals is pretty, pretty hard. The problem also is to identify a spawner in Tencent in 2005. Now it's easy. And as they say, nobody said getting rich, it's easy. But if you are interested in some things like that, Michael here says that he is in those 20% of investors that just bought a nice apartment on Malta with the profits he made using my research. So. I have to visit Malta. And the key message I want to share is, yes, index funds, limited upside, average returns. If you want to dig deeper into knowledge, that's probably the reason why you're subscribed to this channel and you want more. You want lower than market weighted capitalization risk and higher returns. I think it's possible. I've been doing it for more than 20 years now and I think I'll be keeping on for the next 20, 40, and even more years. We just have to look at the risk, the reward, and invest in those things that fit our investment requirements and will lead us to our financial goals.